Hello everybody and welcome back to another redstone video. Today I'm going to be showing you guys something a little bit different. I'm actually going to be giving you all a tutorial on how to make your own redstone inventions and hopefully show you guys a couple cool tricks and you'll learn how to actually build your own different little creations and redstone inventions. So I find myself actually using these five different devices down here pretty much all the time and I often forget how exactly to build them so I wanted to make this video not only to remind myself how to build these five different little basic redstone devices that I use all the time but also to help out you guys and hopefully you know um, this will at least teach you guys how to use the basic redstone and pretty much every redstone invention that you see around this world uses at least one of these five basic redstone designs you see here in front of me. So these things are super simple to build and pretty much you just use these different tools to create whatever redstone invention you're thinking about building. I'm inside my gumball machine right now and pretty much to make this guy I just stitched together all of the basic redstone tools that I'm going to be showing you guys in today's video. So you can see right here we have the little pulse extender and then we have the double piston extender and I'm going to be showing you how to build all of these and once you know how to make these guys you can pretty much make whatever you want to in Minecraft. You just have to stitch together these five basic tools right here and you can pretty much build whatever you want. Alright, so I'm going to go through and show you how each of these five basic redstone contraptions work and then pretty much you just have to stitch them together and you can build pretty much anything you want to in Minecraft, which is pretty awesome. Um, honestly, that's how I go about my inventions. It's just trial and error. You just add, you know, tool after tool and the more tools that you have in your tool belt, the cooler inventions that you can make. So these are five very basic ones that I use quite frequently in pretty much everything that I build. So the first guy here is a very simple double piston extender. With the flip of this lever, all it does is move this one block over one, two blocks, and it also retracts it. And it's very simple to build. You just need one repeater right here on two ticks of delay, a repeater on four ticks of delay, and a dot of redstone going into the block at the top. So this thing is extremely useful, especially with slime blocks. You can move a whole lot of blocks at once, and it also retracts it. So very nice and very compact. Moving on here, we have the pulse extender. I use this guy quite frequently. You can use this little etho hopper clocker that I have set up over here. Um, if you don't want to use the pulse extender, but I like using the pulse extender in some circumstances because it is silent when the etho hopper clock over here has some pistons, which makes some noise. Um, but anyway, the way this guy works is it takes in a very short input. So anything like a button to a repeater just going into this block, it'll take that short input and it will increase it into a longer output. Now, obviously you can accomplish the same effect here with comparators and you might want to, but the cool thing about this guy is it's fully customizable depending on how many items you put in here. So right now we have eight and what's going to happen here is this light is going to turn on for eight ticks and then this light right here is going to turn on for double that so he's going to be on for 16 ticks and this way you can actually choose um, which output you want to take. You could either take it from the torch right here and that'll be exactly how many items you put in this hopper so eight ticks will be that torch or you can place a little comparator here and that will be twice as long because the items have to go back and forth. Now the reason I use this pulse extender so much is because it is fully customizable. So depending on how many items you put in this hopper right here, that will be the amount of delay. So say we want 16 ticks of delay, well we'll just go ahead and put in 16 items and then when we push this button, booyah, you got yourself 16 ticks of delay. So this is so helpful especially when you're dealing with pistons where you need exact timings. I would highly recommend using a customizable um, pulse extender, something like this. And then say we throw in eight more, booyah, got another longer delay. This next guy is by far the most important and the most useful device. This is the Etho Hopper Clock. So right now I have this hopper, he's powered. And if we go ahead and unpower him, we'll go ahead and start the clock up. So there's so many different ways you can use this. This is by far my favorite out of the five here. Um, but let me show you guys what's happening. So right now, um, we have two sticky pistons here with a redstone block. And then you just got two hoppers going into each other with comparators out on each ends. Dot of redstone right there. And the comparators are going into a block. So all it's doing right now is it is keeping a very nice clock. So every, we have eight items in there right now. So every 16 ticks, because it has to take eight to pass it in this guy and eight to pass it back. So every 16 ticks, it will output a little pulse and that's just lighting up the lamp right there. So you can see every 16 ticks that guy, he's lighting up that little lamp right there. 
And then we can obviously increase this output by putting in some items and that's going to increase it. But there are so many different things you can do with that. Obviously right here, this is just if you want a constant output, you know, say every 30 seconds, well, just put 30 seconds of items in here and boom, you got a nice little output every 30 seconds. Over here, this is another way you can use the same exact clock. Now, instead of having two sticky pistons on each side, we have a normal piston on this side. And what that does is now it is a very long repeater. So it's a very long delay. So the item, it's not gonna go back and forth. The redstone block is going to stop because that's not a sticky piston. And instead, it just gives us a really long repeater effect. So we can go ahead, push this button here, that will start it up. So it's going to empty out its eight items, put them back in, and then boom, you see you got a little output right there. We can go ahead and trigger that guy again, and you'll see after eight ticks, you get a little output. So this just makes it so instead of having like a thousand repeaters, you can have this guy. We can put in 32 items and it'll go again. And now you see after the 32 plus eight, after 40 ticks of delay, you get a little output and the lamp's gonna light up. So this is just a great, great design. I highly recommend if you guys aren't using etho clocks like all the time, you really should because they are just amazing. All right, this fourth guy here is a very basic T flip-flop. You use this thing all the time whenever you're dealing with redstone. Um, it is a little bit complex to build, at least this design that I'm building today. Uh, so I'm going to walk you guys through it. But most of the other things that I've showed you already, you can just build it from simply looking at it. And keep in mind that depending on how many items you put inside of this hopper here, that is how long the delay is going to be. But anyway, to build the T flip-flop, we're going to go ahead, place a dropper facing up. Not a dispenser, but a dropper. And then we're going to place another dropper facing towards the side. Then a dropper facing towards the side again. So he's facing that way. Dropper up. And then a dropper to the side. There we go. Then a hopper going into the top of this guy. All you need now is a comparator coming out of that. And that is going to be what you lead into your output. So let me explain real quick what a T flip flop does. You also need to put one item. It can be any choice into that dropper right there. And then give it some hard power. I'll explain what that means in a second. But what a T flip flop does is say we put a button. It pretty much turns a button into a lever. So whenever we give this guy a redstone signal, just a little button press, he is going to trigger and now he's going to stay turned on. And then we push it again. Now he's going to stay turned off. So it turns a button into a lever. And this is so useful for so many different reasons. It is just amazing. Now, what I mean by hard input, you have to have a repeater going into this guy or button but you can't have a line of redstone. That is a that is a soft, soft in, input signal and it won't actually trigger. You can see it's not working there. But if you put a little repeater here, then it is going to start working. And that's just an aspect of redstone that I'm not gonna be explaining today, but just keep in mind, you need a repeater going into this guy. You can also use a comparator, but not a dot of redstone that is too weak of a signal. I just like having a little button on the side, makes it very simple, and then it turns the button into a lever. Pretty cool T flip flop. All right, the final redstone tool that I use to make all of my redstone inventions. This is a pulse shortener. It's by far one of the easiest to understand. And if you guys have been dealing with Minecraft redstone for a while, you by far know how this guy works. Anyway, let me show you guys how to build it because it is so simple and so useful. You guys will use it so much. So it's a pulse shortener. And what that means is it will take in a long pulse of any length and shorten it to a very short output. So you can see here, um, if we place a torch down, it's gonna shorten that torch's output to just four ticks of delay. And we can change that too. So you just want a one tick pulse and that will actually do some funkiness to this piston here. You can see it's a sticky piston. So if we put it on four ticks of delay, it'll just extend and pull back very shortly. But if you put it on one tick of delay, it'll actually leave that block sticking out. That's just another aspect of redstone that we can get into a later time. But it takes in a very long signal and it shortens it to a very simple output, which is so useful. So to build this guy, you just need a soft input or a hard input going into a block, a piston below that block, and then a repeater right here. Make sure it is a repeater, and you can put it on any tick of delay depending on what you want the output to be. Four ticks of delay is mighty fine. Another way to build this, if you guys don't want to use slime blocks, pretty cool tip, you can actually just put a little bit of sand there on a sticky or on a normal piston, sorry, and that will accomplish the same thing. 
and then the sand just falls right back down. I use this guy so much, he's used in the Rainbow Beacon and pretty much all of um, all of my redstone builds. But this is a great way, uh, say you need to simple a button input, you need to shorten it. And because button inputs are pretty long, like look how long this redstone lasts, but the output is then shortened from this very awesome easy to build device so there you have it that should give you guys some basic tools to build redstone but if i come over here to my lottery machine that i build right here boom you got a pulse shortener over here etho hopper clock come down here the pulse extender so pretty much those five things that i showed you there that's almost all you need to know and then you just mix and match them and you got pretty much any redstone device that you can set your mind to that's why redstone's so awesome it's really not complex at all or hard to build. You just mix and match on this all these little redstone things that I showed you how to build, and you got pretty much anything you can set your mind to. Now don't get me wrong, there are a lot more of very simple circuits to show you guys, and a lot of different things to help you guys out, such as randomizers, monostable circuits, but those are my basics. If I had to build something with just, you know, those basic guys, those are the ones I would pick. And I thought I would share it with you guys. And also with myself because I find myself forgetting how to build a lot of those and this video will definitely help remind me so anyway hope you all enjoyed um tell me if you guys like this certain type of video of me showing you how to actually build redstone because uh, if you do I have some other ideas and some other things to show you guys like there's so many more so many more little simple devices that I can show you such as item sorters or just basic redstone this is sort of for people who are trying to get into the minecraft redstone game and I just wanted to show you guys that it's really nothing complicated and it's it's very, very easy to understand if you just take some time. It's just trial and error. That's all it is. So anyway, my name's Crew. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Sorry if any of you guys are like professional redstoners and this sort of bored you to death because it wasn't, you know, wasn't super complex redstone machinery. But anyway, my name's Crew. Thank you all so much for watching. I also live stream on Saturdays at 12 Eastern building cool redstone machines. You guys should be there. Anyway, hope you all enjoyed this video. Tell me if you want more of it in the comments below, and yeah, I'll see you all next time. Adios.